What's going on everyone? My name is Luke. Thank you for coming back to another video. Now, if you are like me and you do own an aging Mercedes like this, one of the most important things that you need to have in your toolkit is a way to properly diagnose these vehicles. Now, there's a lot of software alternatives and hardware alternatives to the actual dealer software, but today I want to show you how you can get your hands on the hardware for under $150, how to properly diagnose these cars and really do some tests that only the dealer typically would be able to get done for you. Now, if you are new to this channel, thank you for stopping by. Make sure to subscribe and like if this is something that you enjoy. Going through these old German cars, keeping them up and running, how fun they could be when they are running properly and the headaches that happen inevitably when the two end up breaking down. So I wanna kinda of take you guys through my journey. So if you are interested in something like this, definitely leave a subscribe, definitely leave a like and leave a comment down below of something that you were worried about if you had purchased an old Mercedes like this. Every manufacturer has a specific set of tools and a specific set of software that will allow their uh, mechanics, their trained mechanics, to go into these cars, readapt to certain pieces of hardware if they need, replace pieces, uh, retrain transmissions, uh, really find what's going on with these vehicles in deep level diagnosis down to the individual module and sometimes even more granular than that. And Mercedes is definitely no slouch in this department as well. The dealer level software is actually called Zentry. You may have heard of it. It gives you some incredibly great granularity. And what I mean by that is you can actually see the values in the automatic dimming mirror if you really wanted to, the light values that are coming in the dimming values that it tries to compensate for. It's kind of crazy. So you have a lot of information and this software gives you the power to readapt to things. If you're a DIY mechanic and you can get the mechanic stuff out of the way, but it's just this, it's the software, it's the programming, it's the dealers. You don't have to worry about that anymore. You can replace an injector, which is not a hard job to do physically, especially on this, uh, well, even on these V8 engines, these, uh, this tight V8 engines, I can replace an injector, no problem. Beginning it to readapt and actually program to the vehicle so it knows that it has a new injector in it that's where you're gonna have to go down to the dealership and probably spend no less than a thousand dollars fixing what you've done, uh, probably just putting in a new injector and giving you a hard time about the whole thing. That's still a little bit of an inconvenience when it's something that you're doing in your garage. So I was super excited when I was able to find a full hardware solution to diagnose this car for under 150 bucks. And that's what I wanna share with you today. So let's hop in and get started. Now, when it comes to running dealership software, you really don't need a whole lot of horsepower. If you have an old i3 and four gigs of RAM and a laptop with a good battery, chances are you could use that. Just use that from now on. No use spending the extra 100, $200 unless you really want to. I don't have a Windows laptop. So I was scouring the internet looking for a good option, a good device. And I found tons of laptops that are boring, regular laptops, thick, old battery, maybe didn't work etc cetera, etc cetera. and what i stumbled on was something i didn't even know existed was a dell venue and these dell venues are actually sweet little devices they're touchscreen uh full touchscreen windows 10 devices it does come with a detachable keyboard which has an extra battery in it they do tend to stop working after a while like mine did uh however the keyboard and trackpad work just fine uh but for our purposes you really only need a touchscreen the keyboard on windows is pretty fantastic uh the virtual keyboard uh so i've had no problems with that it does come with four gigs of ram an m3 you can also find an m5 uh and eight gigs of eight gigabytes of ram has an upgradable m.2 m.2 ssd excuse me uh and overall it's a great little device capacitive touchscreen 1080p which is higher resolution than most laptops in this price range uh, and i found this for right around 80 bucks if you can believe that so i got a pretty good deal on it I have some fantastic software already on here uh and usually you would need a piece of hardware to sort of uh convert a lot of the code going from the car to the tablet from the tablet to the car uh, from the software rather uh but you don't need that so the second piece that you're going to need is actually in open port so the open port is a piece piece of hardware you can find online this is the open port 2.0 revision e uh, i believe this is the newest one at the time that i had bought it but I really don't think it matters. I think most of them you're gonna find are gonna be revision E. Now you can get the official one for about 150 bucks. I found this Chinese knockoff for right around $40. So uh, all it is is an open uh, OBD2 port up top. It's got a little bit of a chipset, some circuitry inside, some uh, obviously ways to communicate and convert those signals. Uh, you have a USB, mini USB, a two and a half millimeter jack that's gonna be for data transfer as well and an SD card slot uh, if your application requires it. Uh, I haven't used that SD card slot. I don't really know who it would be used for. I can make educated guesses, but I'm not here to do that. I am in no way a wizard. I don't pretend to know how these things work because uh, previously, like I said, dealers need these large uh, decoders, whereas we just need this little thing and some software hacks, which is pretty crazy. So you're actually able to choose where you want the data to be pulled from. And we'll just choose to pull from this instead of the standard um, dot matrix MCI, whatever the hell it's called. I do know a 
black wizard when it comes to this stuff, black magic, crazy. He, he, it seems like it to me at least. He can add some crazy cool stuff into this car in terms of adding new modes and functions and, and, and features that you never had before in the car just by software, uh, as well as readapt things and do some crazy stuff. So I'll probably have some more information about how these things work. Uh, but for now, let's just jump into the software and I'll kind of give you a quick, very basic overview of how it looks. All right, so we're gonna hope that you could just see this over here right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the OBD2. I'm gonna go ahead you hear it connect right there. We're gonna go ahead and turn the car onto accessory, turn our AC off so we don't draw, draw any power. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and start up Zentry right here. So Zentry Diagnosis is a nice little application. This does take a little bit to start up. It probably takes around 30 to 45 seconds to start up the first time. And then right here we have Select Pass-Through Device, the PTD device. Now it's SAE J2534, which is the open port pass-through that we have. We're uh, gonna select our open port, hit OK. So now it knows we're gonna be pulling data from the open port that is connected to it now, and it's going to be running it through the Zentry system. Now guys, I gotta let you know, this is in no way a comprehensive review, how-to video, or anything of that sort. Uh, of Zentry. This is simply just a quick look to see how easy it is to really run some basic diagnostics for you uh, within the Zentry software and some of the other tabs that you might be able to play around with. So as it's starting up right now, you see with Zentry, you actually have a whole suite of vehicles that you can choose from. A lot of them are not in the American market, but if they look familiar to you, I'm not familiar with Cobus. I'm not familiar with bike, back, motor. I'm familiar with Freightline. Fuso, that looks like Mitsubishi to me. I don't know what I'm looking at. So we're just gonna pay attention to Mercedes-Benz Smart and Maybach if you're lucky enough to work on one of those. But gonna jump into the Mercedes-Benz. Now you can either punch in your VIN model if you want, your VIN number, but we're just gonna go to passenger car. You could go to super sports cars, the SLR. Uh, you can go to industrial uh, components if you have uh, industrial Mercedes uh, stuff. You can also go through here as well. Buses, Unimogs, if you have an old Unimog you wanna try to diagnose, we're gonna go back to passenger cars. We are in E-Class and we are the 212s. So we're gonna go hit on 212 and it gives you all the list of 212s with their engine codes and chassis codes in there as well. We're just gonna hit Zentric Diagnosis at the bottom. It'll automatically detect what vehicle this is and start to run the diagnostics on itself. Now what you could do, uh, typically this will print out, but you can have it print digitally. So we're gonna run a test through my car. I know I have a few little faults that are not really a huge deal, uh, but they are gonna show up on this just to show uh, something. But you're gonna wanna uh, start the vehicle automatically after connecting the multiplexer. Now that multiplexer is that piece of decoding hardware that I'm talking about. Uh, automatically start a quick test. We're gonna wanna run a quick diagnostics there. And we wanna save the quick test as a PDF file instead of printing it out. That way we can actually save that, print it out later if we need to, uh, and reference that back. And there's a lot of great data. There's snapshot data uh, and everything else. So right here, it's gonna say the status of the ignition cannot be read out from the vehicle. That's normal. It doesn't know if the car is on or off. We have our dashboard on, so ignition is on. Up at the top right-hand corner, we're just gonna wanna hit ignition there, and no problem. There you go, it pulled up our VIN right here. Our chat, it's really small, you're not gonna be able to see this, but our chassis number of 212091, our engine of 278922, and our transmission of 722957 or 967. Right now we see it switched over uh, to the quick test. So quick test is running, uh, loading data. You'll see a number out of another number that is the total amount of control units and uh, modules that are in this car. There's quite a bit, uh, 51 actually right now. So control unit one of 51, we're gonna let that run through uh, and then it'll print out or at least shoot out a test um, or a uh, results page uh, within Zentry that we can then pry around, poke around in, see what might have been wrong. Uh, what's really cool is that it shows you exactly what happened, the mileage, how many times it's happened since the last mileage, and all the other snapshot data is available of all the other systems in the car to see exactly what might have caused it. So there you go, the quick test result is now being saved. So look at that, it's got 10 faults in there, which is good to see, not really. But we're gonna go into the diagnosis, which is the second second tab over here on the left and we'll go ahead and see what those faults are. So starting on the car, we'll just start from the bottom because there's not a whole bunch down there. We do have a couple left seat front adjustments, right seat front adjustment uh, for the front door. We have some errors there, which I don't really know why because everything seems to work fine. Uh, look at that. Okay, so shift module. Uh, this probably came up because I had uh, 
just recently tuned back my vehicle uh, with my uh, custom tune, so uh, it did throw some codes there. So it's always good to go through and clear these, but it gives you some really great diagnosis. So you can actually see any one of these engine computers, any one of these computers here, and see exactly what might be wrong with them. So you can look at a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm not gonna bore you with going through all of these, but you really could go through some cool stuff. So we're gonna go through the engine computer because that's the one that has some of the most live data. Now in this section right here, you're actually able to run through tests that the dealer might have. There are compression tests that you can do on this. There are uh, all sorts of you know management tests and, and, and sensor tests that you can run through to really make sure that the car is running at its peak performance. Now for us, we wanna go into type of drive. Uh, we have uh, fuel pump, shift module, power electronics. We wanna go to motor electronics here, uh, but there also is the chassis, driver assistance uh, system, the body computer. You can go through the keyless uh, go, but we're gonna go through the motor electronics because it's the funnest to look at. N310 motor electronics uh, for combustion unit at engine M278. I confirm I've read the safety information. Don't do anything stupid. Uh, ideally, you should not be actuating. You should not be running tests if you do not know what you are doing. There are supplemental things that you may have to do. Now that the car is idling, uh, test values while idling. We can go ahead and Look at the engine speed, look at the coolant temperature, the values that it should be in, battery voltage level, uh, pressure sensors, values of pressure sensors especially. And you can actually go deeper into this, hit continue here. And you see, because this is supposed to be idle, if I rev it to above idle, boost pressure goes up, intake manifold pressure goes up, uh, everything sort of changes. So there you go, see? There was a slight vacuum on the intake manifold pressure and now that has gone. So this is live monitoring uh, to its fullest extent. And this is just obviously scratching the surface. A lot of really great information here. Again, this isn't a full uh, overview of the program. Really what I use is really just to look at error codes and events on specific modules that I have in the car and obviously running through diagnostics so I can go ahead and clear those out. So all in all, this is a fantastic application to have. Uh, if you need the hardware, this is a beautiful piece of tablet and piece of kit to have. The open port is irreplaceable. Like I said, if I go back to my desktop here, I have my Honda, I have my Subaru, I have my GM uh, Techline Connect, which is only for uh, GM dealers. And I also have Ford IDS over here, which I haven't really categorized yet, and all the Mercedes stuff. Um, DAS, which I, like I said, is the old uh, Zentry software. You have Vediamo, which is a full German program. If you get that installed, do not really touch it unless you actually know what you need it for. Uh, you could really screw up your car doing something that you don't know what you're doing, but that's really how to make some modification to the software, which is what we'll get into with that video uh, with my buddy there. But uh, diagnosis uh, files in PDF centers where you would really find those saved uh, diagnosis files that you search. That you scan. So that is pretty much it. That is Zentry in a nutshell, a very, very rudimentary introduction to the fact that maybe it even exists. And that's really what my point of the video was. I am not a professional, I'm not a technician. I don't know how to use this software to even half its fullest extent or whatever you wanna call it, but I am aware of what it can do and the power that it gives me to be able to diagnose my car. That software will allow you to see that. And if it is something more serious, you can become even more educated when you do go to the dealership don't do that. Or you do go to your Indy that obviously if you trust them shouldn't be an issue, but at least you know exactly what's going on with the car to the same extent that they do. You might be able to make an educated decision or at least give a reason to get a second opinion somewhere else. So all of this is in the name of saving money and helping you guys maintain your Mercedes to the best of your ability. And I do wanna say thank you so much for your support on my previous videos. I love documenting my journey on this car. There's not a whole lot of content on these W212, especially the 550 variants with this motor, the pre-facelift. I love making content on these. I love that you guys love watching it. If you have any suggestions, criticisms, anything at all, definitely leave it in the comment section down below. And if we can get this video to 200 likes, I got a great video that I wanna do uh, comparing this vehicle from stock form into tune. So I wanna see what kind of real world performance that will give you uh, without going crazy with hardware and transmission tunes and everything else. So if you're excited for that, leave a subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,